Okay, everybody, we're in module four, and module four is a very important module because what we're going to talk about in module four is breaking the matrix of ingrained ideology, meaning you've been taught a lot of stuff for a lot of years, and um, what you've probably discovered as you've continued on, as you've moved on, you know, trying to fill that void, you know, moving into another religious idea, another religious perspective, is that you've got hooks. You've recognized there's, you're in this other religion, but there's a part of you that has a lot of beliefs still anchored in the old religion. And that is a problem. This is a big problem. And this is why I wanted to make this series. Because what I've discovered since I've left the Jehovah's Witnesses after 40 years, I had a lady help me get out some of these hooks. Like, what, what is a hook? A hook is something that you believe near and dear. Um, like I was shown in the Bible in Psalms 83, 18, and it said that men may know that God's whose name alone is Jehovah, J-E-H-O-V-A-H, is the most high over all the earth. So when that was shared with me, how could I deny it? I saw it in the Bible. Um, the witnesses told me it was supposed to be in the Old Testament 7,000 times, which they reinstalled it in the Bible. So I found myself when I left the Jehovah's Witnesses and I went into these other churches, they were talking about Jesus. They weren't talking about Jehovah. So although I loved what they said, a part of me was still in the Jehovah's Witnesses. My mind was still inside the Kingdom Hall. And this was a big problem because I couldn't move forward. And so I found out there was lots of things that were indoctrinated in me that I thought were true. I thought God's name was Jehovah, and I didn't know why anybody wasn't using it. So this became a real problem. i got to tell you, I've, I've went to hundreds of Christian churches, and I never heard the name Jehovah once. Um, I went into some esoteric metaphysical teachings, and I heard the name Jehovah um, sparingly. But the fact of the matter was, nobody was using it. And I was told that that was God's name. His name was holy. Yeah, you know, and, and there was a lot of, a lot of indoctrination behind it. Um, the name Jehovah was the Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, without the vowels. So we were told that the Tetragrammaton was 7,000 times in the Old Testament. And where the Tetragrammaton was, that's where God's name was supposed to be, Y-H-W-H, Jehovah. And so how could I deny that the witnesses were, were, were wrong when nobody else put it in their Bible except Jehovah's Witnesses? So I had a big problem. Although I loved the things that I was learning, and I did learn things in all of my faiths, I believe life is, is comings and goings and meetings and partings. That's what I believe now. I used to believe it was just, you know, I was going to find my truth. But for the most part, I learned a lot in the witnesses, and I learned a lot in everything that I've been in, meetings and partings. So I just wanted to throw that out there, um, that, I, that I've gained a lot. I don't hate the witnesses. I don't hate anywhere that I've been. I've thoroughly enjoyed my journey. Now I've enjoyed my journey. But... What I want to say to you is it's a real problem when you can't move forward because you are stuck. You are chained to an ideal that you can't let go of. <clears throat> so the question is, how do I let go? I had another one. Abstain from food sacrifice to idols and from blood and good health to you. That's what we used to say at the door. The Bible says, abstain from blood and from food sacrifice to idols and good health to you. So we'd say that. Well, again, I saw this in the Bible. I go into these churches and they're having blood drives. And I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, this is, this is bad. They're taking blood. Oh my God, blood is sacred. You shouldn't put anybody's blood in your body. Oh my God. Well, you know what? I found out I had 25 or more of these hooks in my body. And they had me chained down. I couldn't fly. I couldn't soar. I couldn't fully embrace what was forward because I had one foot in the old, the old ideal, Jehovah's Witnesses, and I had one foot in the new. 
And I couldn't argue with it. It, it would be the same in Mormon, Mormonism. You know, they show you in the Bible that God has, had a prophet, Moses, Noah, and he said, would God ever leave us without a prophet? Of course not. He would never abandon us. So Joseph Smith was a prophet. And you read that in the Bible. And whoever else was in that religion, you know, was a prophet. So you say, well, that makes perfect sense. God wouldn't leave us without a prophet. And then he wrote something along the lines of, of their covenants and doctrines. And you, you read that in the Bible. That's another Mormon doctrine that, you know, that God's making his covenant with his people. And so they're all about covenants and doctrines. So the point I'm making is once you see it in the scriptures and once it's been presented to you as truth and you say, yeah, that's truth, that's your hook. That's your hook. And sometimes you don't even know they're there because you have been programmed like me. I was programmed for 40 years. I was indoctrinated 40 years. I was in the same ideal 40 years. Um, I was told I was bad if I left. I, I told I, that the whole world out there was Satan's world. I was scared to go into churches. The whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one, Satan. All the churches outside in the world are part of Babylon the Great, the, fur, the world empire of false religion, Babylon the Great. If you go in there, there's every lurking demon and every creepy thing uh, in those temples. I was afraid to walk into a church, so afraid. When I went to my first church after I left, I thought my hand was going to burn off. And I kept reaching for the doorknob. And I thought, this place is full of demons. I see another hook. So I had all these things, and it was, and it was really hard. So although I found the courage to leave, I found a friend to help me through my journey, or several friends, and I was out. I wasn't out. And this is crucial. And I'll tell you why it's crucial. Because if you try to live in both worlds, you don't live. And I can tell you some really sad experiences of people who never got free. In fact, I met a lady in a church when I got out, and she was a Jehovah's Witness, and she was so glad to see me. And I said, hey, do you want to see my new book, Eyewitness, the Shocking Insider Story of Jehovah's Witnesses? And she goes, yeah, yeah. And she's like, this is so cool, and you're out too, and I'm out too. And I said, yeah. And then when I opened the book, it says, Scriptures taken from, I, I might have had a couple Bibles in there, but the one that I remember was the King James Version. And she freaked out. She goes, oh my God, Dan, you quoted from the King James Version? And I said, yes. And she goes, oh my God, why? You know, you know the, the right Bible, the New World Translation of the Scriptures, Jehovah's Witness Bible, New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. And I said, yeah, but what's it matter? I didn't realize that she did not have all her hooks out. The Jehovah's Witness Bible is the only accurate Bible. That's what we're told. It has Jehovah's name in it 7,000 times. In so much indoctrination. But what was interesting, the interesting point that I'm going to make is that that girl started to get sicker and sicker and sicker and more mentally ill and more mentally ill as time went on. She never got out. If you live in two different worlds, if you live in the world, I'm in this new religious idea and you're still chained to the old one, I'm going to tell you where you're truthfully headed toward. You're headed to schizophrenia, a split mind. And unless you get free, unless you get these hooks out, Unless you can take these things apart, Jehovah's name, blood, and so on, you ain't out. Trust me. You may be out physically, but if you're not out mentally, you're not out. And I'm telling you, you're headed for a lot of trouble interiorly and inside your soul, inside your mind. And you don't want to be. You want to be free. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't get rid of all the things that you learned, all the things that you hold near and dear, because there's truth in all religions. You'll learn a lot. I've learned a lot in the witnesses. I've learned a lot in all these different phases. But there's certain things that if you don't get loose of, um, you're doomed. You're doomed in the sense of compartmentalization, split mind. So you've got to come to terms with some of these things. So like for me, the blood, I'll, I'll just give you one example of dismantling the blood ideal. Um, and it's usually better if I did this with, with somebody else, but I'll just tell you what happened. I told the lady that, you know, the scripture where it said, 
abstain from foods. A friend of mine, it was a, it was a lady who was trying to help me through this journey of leaving the witnesses. And she said, uh, she said, let's take a look at that scripture. And she said, what's your Bible say? And I said, well, it says to abstain from food sacrifice to idols and from blood and good health to you. She said, next week I'm coming over with 20 Bibles, <clears throat> excuse me, on a dolly. And I said, okay. And she says, we're going to go through all the Bibles, 20 of them, every kind you, you can imagine, King James, NIV, you know, whatever, Message Bible. And she says, we're going to find out what that means, that farewell to you. And I said, okay. And so she comes over with all these Bibles, and you know, there wasn't one Bible that said, good health to you. Only the Jehovah's Witness Bible said, good health to you. So this thing that we were saying at the door, you know, even the Bible says you should abstain from food, sacrifice, settles, and blood, and good health to you, wasn't what they're saying at all. So the lady has me read this, this uh, passage about the blood. And what was happening was the Jews were preaching, and they were preaching circumcision, you know, that you had to be circ circumcised to, to be a follower of Christ. And then the Gentiles, they, the, the, the Jews crossed over into Gentile territory, and the Gentiles were eating the food, sacrificed to idols, and drinking the blood, if I have that correct. And a dispute broke out amongst them. The Jews, it said the Jews and the Gentiles went to the older men. Now, now you've got to read this passage, right? Because I only learned it from Jehovah's Witness ideology. I never read it for myself, which I encourage you to do. Read your Bible for yourself. And so when I looked it up, the Jews are preaching circumcision. The Gentiles are stumbling the, the Jews because they're eating the food sacrificed to idols and the blood. And the Jews are preaching circumcision, so a dispute broke out. So they went to the older men, and the older men concluded, after they had this discussion about what's happening, they're, they're pissing us off, they're pissing us off, they want us to be circumcised, they want, you know. And the older men said to the Jews, for the sake of not stumbling your brothers, your Gentile brothers, do not preach circumcision. Do not preach literal circumcision, but be circumcised from the heart, that is, single focused on God. And stop preaching this literal thing, you're stumbling them. And that wasn't what it was about anyway. It wasn't about circumcision in that sense. And so then he told the Gentiles to abstain from food sacrifice to idols and from blood. But here's the thing. It was for the sake of stumbling their Jewish brothers. And then at the end was the biggest surprise of my life. Twenty Bibles said, farewell to you, meaning be on your way, farewell. I hope you work this out amongst you. But stop doing this for the sake of stumbling your brother. Stop doing this, you Jews, for the sake of stop, for, for stumbling your Gentile brothers. So here's the point. There was a scripture in the Bible, in the Witness Bible, that was projected intentionally by the organization that, that we were saying to people, you know, abstain from this blood and good health to you, when that's what it wasn't, that's what it did not say at all. It said, do this for the sake of not stumbling your brother, not blood to save your life. And it also said, farewell, not good health to you. So see what happened to me right there? By being able to dismantle that idea, I was free. I was like, well, that ain't what it's saying. It's not saying blood to save your life. It's saying don't drink blood to stumble your brother. Don't do this to stumble your brother. It, it wasn't about how they projected it. But you know what? If I wouldn't have dismantled it, that would have been lodged in my head, and I would have always thought everyone outside is, is wrong. Everybody outside has got it wrong. They're living wrong. And it, it would have held me back. So I had to dismantle it. And then since then, I recently did research on the internet and I found that the blood liaison people that were watching people die, the people that came and stood by your door when you got in an accident and uh, made sure they didn't give you blood because you were unconscious. You got in an accident, you were put into a hospital room, you had your blood card, maybe the doctor was going to throw it away and give you blood anyway to save your life. Um, they would have blood liaison come and stand by your door to make sure you didn't get blood. Well, um, as I started looking on the internet, those brothers started to become very nervous 
They thought, what are we doing? We're watching people after people after people die in here and not take blood. I don't know if this is right. Then the witness organization started changing some of their ideals about blood. We can take this component, but not this component. And it was like, I was free. I was like, what a bunch of bull. What a bunch of BS. And I was able to detangle it. And my most recent one was the name Jehovah. You know, how was I going to get rid of that? I saw the name Jehovah and, you know, it made sense that it was the Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, without the vowels, Jehovah. And so how was I ever going to get rid of that? And who was the only one who used that, that name? But Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, you know, as I prayed about it, as I began to go deeper and deeper and deeper, I really came to the realization that God is unnameable. And I also came to the realization that we don't get life by knowing his name. That'd be like saying, my dad, calling my dad Melvin. Would he rather have me call him Melvin or would he rather me call him daddy? You know? And anyway, and then I start thinking, you know, if this is Jehovah's organization and Jehovah's giving them wrong information, you know, is this the right Jehovah? You, you know what I mean? There was all sorts of things that happened. But what I finally realized for me, and it was enough, that God is a spirit and those who worship will worship in spirit in truth and not by name. I don't need to know his name. And I know all the Jehovah's Witness ideology that he took out of people for his namesake and, and on and on. There's so much ideology around it. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter to me. People aren't saved by names. You know, and I know the Bible says he who calls on the name of Jehovah will be saved or the, or the Lord or whoever. But it's, but it's totally out of context, just like the blood was out of context. But anyway, the point I'm making is those were some of my hooks and you got to dig down. You got to dig down. You got to get those hooks out. You got to find out which ones are, have got you nailed down. Maybe it's going out door to door by two, you know, that Jesus sent them out by twos. And, you know, Matthew 24, 14, the good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inherited earth for a witness to all the nations and then will only come. You might think we're the only ones who are doing that, but you're not. The Mormons do too. But, but you might think, this is the organization that's going out by twos, and, and that's the end of it. But, you know, as you study, as you seek, see, for me, that was another hook that I had to get out. And what I came to realize is that when a person comes to the end of themselves, they come to the end of themselves. It ain't going to be so much me preaching to them, you know. It's going to be when they're done living their, their life, their, their life in duality, their life in separation, their life in law, whatever, when they come to the end of that then they're ready for God. And, and I may or may not have anything to do with it, but I don't feel their blood is on my hands anymore. But these are all things that I had to get out of me, that I had to dismantle. They have to be dismantled or you're in a lot of trouble. And so if you have something that's binding upon your soul, if you have something that's binding within your temple, something that's just saying, you know, but, but the witnesses have this true. And maybe they do. Maybe there is some they do have true. Maybe you still want to believe God's name's Jehovah. I'm not telling you to get rid of that name. What I'm talking about is things that you feel are holding you back. Something that you felt is the truth. You know, like the Mormons with covenants and doctrines. They can show you right in Ezekiel, Daniel, all the stuff about covenants and doctrines and prophets. And they can prove their point. A witness can take you to the Bible and show you about the paradise earth, and that's God's original purpose, and it still is his purpose. And, and you can find whatever you want. You can make a religion out of any part of the Bible you want. You can make a whole religion out of Revelation. You can make a whole religion out of the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. You know, in fact, that's the most accurate of all the, the books. That's the most, you, you know what I mean, um, if you talk to people who are messianic. Um, they'll tell you we don't go really beyond the Torah. You know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they had their real relationship. They're, you know, we don't get into the Jesus stuff. We, we don't know about that. And so, anyway, what you have to do is you have to dig down. And every now and then, something will come to the surface. A lot of times, some of these ideologies are buried. Some of these things are buried in your subconscious. You don't even know. It's like I found myself talking about Jehovah's name over and over. Whenever I met my wife's mother, I would say, do you know Jehovah's name is supposed to be 7,000 times in the Old Testament, and it's a tetragram? And I started saying this to everybody, and my wife looked at me and said, you know, Dan, I think you're still hooked on that name. And you know, 
I had to be honest with myself, I was. It was something that was so ingrained in me, and I really believed it. And you know what I want to say, too? It took me 14 years to unhook it. So just know <clears throat> that this is a process, but just be aware that you're going to have some hooks. And in order for you to move forward as best you can, take what you need, leave the rest, maybe put some stuff on the shelf of I don't know, and, and move forward, and it's okay not to know. It's okay not to have all the answers. The witnesses didn't all, they have all the answers, and nobody else does either. So just allow yourself to, to move forward. Take some of the good stuff with you that you got out of the witnesses, and I don't care if it's the name. I don't care if it's the paradise. I don't care what it is. It don't matter. But just move along. But when you find something that's really got you hooked, really pulling you back, and you feel like you're divided. If you feel like you're in another religion and you're divided, know some of it's normal. Know some of it's going to be normal to feel like, wow, this isn't what I was taught. And you, you'll feel like you're a little bit on shaky ground. You'll feel like you're, you know, not so sure about this. And you'll have all the horror stories they told you about Satan. And you're in Satan's world. And, and uh, be careful. You're going to be misled. You're going to have all that programming. Um, you're going to have all that programming running through your head while you're doing all this. But just keep going. Eventually, eventually, the Jehovah's Witness stuff fades. Eventually, it's not that important. You know, eventually, you'll, you'll see the watchtower. If you, if you track it through the Internet, you'll see it change over and over and over again. And you'll say, oh, my God, God doesn't change over and over again. So there's going to be a progressive realization of, that, that wasn't the truth or some of the stuff you were taught. If you think about this like this, I had 40 years of things changing in the Jehovah's Witnesses. And before that, since the 1800s, they've been, they've been changing and getting it wrong. So what if you get it wrong? So what if you don't know? So what? Um, so just, just move on. Just keep on moving. And, uh, but, I wanted, but I just wanted to share with you that one point about the hooks. If you don't get them out, i am tell you, they hold you back and it'll literally pull you in two. And you don't want to be pulled in two. You've got to find a happy medium. You could take some stuff, leave some stuff, but if you really find you're divided or you believe 99% of the things in the witnesses and, and maybe it wasn't time for you to leave. Maybe it was time for you just to hang in there Maybe you believe most of it's true and you just shouldn't leave. Maybe you're just disgruntled and maybe you should just stay there. And that's okay too. So, but I'm, but I'm wanting to say if you're moving forward and you feel that tug of war, um, some of it's natural, but if it persists, you need to dig down. You need to see what's holding you back. Talk about the name Jehovah to other ministers. Look up Jehovah in, in the, on the internet. Break apart that name. Uh, you might find out it's just a name. There's Adonai. There's several names for Jehovah, the Provider, Jehovah Jireh. I mean, it goes on and on. I think one time I saw, I don't know, 40 to 100 names uh, that were like Jehovah, and they were all part of what he stands for, you know, that uh, in, a, in a way that he serves us. And so, so I eventually got over getting hung up on the name. Um, so anyway, this was a tough one to talk about. Um, it's hard to really explain, but, but the truth is, the truth, if you're seeking the truth, you'll find the truth. Jesus promised the truth. He said the truth will set you free. If you're a seeker of truth, keep asking, and it will be given. Keep asking the Father, give me the truth that sets me free. And I promise your soul will be liberated. You'll be able to drink from that well that Jesus talked about where you never get thirsty again. And uh, you feel that connectivity, that union um, with the Father. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. So anyway, that's it for this, uh, this uh, talk about freeing your mind, actually breaking out of this matrix, because it literally is a matrix. And this stuff has been planted in for a long time. It's, it's deeply ingrained. We don't even know most of it's there. So let it come up as it will. It'll come up as it will. You might just get past one thing, and then a new one will come up. And then you might get past another one, get past the name of Jehovah, and the blood will come up. 
whatever it is, allow yourself just to be okay with being a little confused, a little fearful, and, and, and move forward. Anyway, that's it, and I can't wait to share the final uh, module with you, and it's going to be how to soar, how to really fly, really how to be liberated and, and uh, be free, to find your path, your nourishment, your spiritual food. Okay, thanks.